Do you know the lips that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us? How many functions do they have? Three important functions. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد أيحسب أن لن يقدر عليه أحد يقول أهلكت مالا لبدا أيحسب أن لم يره أحد ألم نجعل له عينين ولسانا وشفتين وهديناه النجدين فلقت حمل العقبة وما أدراك ما العقبة فك رقبة أو إطعام في يوم ذي مسربة يتيما ذا مقربة أو مسكينا ذا متربة ثم كان من الذين آمنوا وتواصوا بالصبر وتواصوا بالمرحمة أولئك أصحاب الميمنة والذين كفروا بآياتنا هم أصحاب المشأمة عليهم نار بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, inshallah ta'ala, uh, this morning, uh, before I begin uh, the Fajr reflection, I want to take this opportunity, inshallah ta'ala, to thank and make dua for our wonderful brothers, our media team, especially our Muhandis, Muhandis Ibrahim, Jazahullah khairan. Say, uh, Say I mean, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect him from all types of evils. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him in this life and the next life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with a righteous wife, inshallah ta'ala. And also righteous children, bi'idnillah ta'ala. MashaAllah, he has been doing a wonderful, wonderful job, mashaAllah. As you know, alhamdulillah, uh, the da'wah that we do in our masjid, the lessons that we do here in the masjid, alhamdulillah, as you know, uh, these lessons, they are either live streamed or they are recorded and then later on, mashallah, shared with the people. And mashallah, jazahullah khairan, our uh, wonderful, mashallah, uh, Muhandis, Muhandis Ibrahim, he has done a fantastic job, mashallah, his consistency, mashallah, and also his... Uh, ability to do really 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 well alhamdulillah and in terms of like what he produces he does like an excellent job which is recognized by the people subhanallah wherever i go uh, in the uk or even outside of the uk people say mashallah we are very proud of masjid al-furqan and i say to them what you see and what you don't see what you don't see 
behind the scenes is like that's where the where the where things are being driven from mashallah and we have muhandis ibrahim and alhamdulillah muhandis ibrahim gets phone calls every now and then right now from different masajids they're saying we want to we want to see the muhandis we want the muhandis to help us with our media and mashallah he has been doing fantastic job mashallah he's been going around and alhamdulillah helping out the masajid may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase him in khair mashallah alhamdulillah so we want to appreciate mashallah the work the fantastic job that he does and alhamdulillah i know our congregation should know he's doing a fantastic job and inshallah ta'ala may he continue to do that as well allahumma ameen also he has a support team alhamdulillah such as brother ismail brother yunus and and mashallah the younger brothers as well may allah subhanahu ta'ala bless them all allahumma ameen the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us man la yashkuri nas la yashkurillah yes if you don't thank the people you're not thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and accept it from from them as well and also may allah bless our alhamdulillah uh, our management of the masjid our idara jazakumullah khairan for also giving the muhandis the support that he needs to fulfill his mission mashallah jazakumullah khairan as well and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin uh, today we have reached surah al balad who would have thought that one day we'll get to Surah Al-Balad, subhanAllah, when we have started this amazing journey, the journey of, the, uh, of our Fajr reflection and a while back. And now we are approaching, subhanAllah, the end of the Qur'an. And inshaAllah ta'ala, and as you can see, we have recited Surah Al-Balad al yawm subhanAllah. And uh, we have also recited Surah Al-Shams and Surah Al-Layl. And we will not be able to go through all of, those, uh, all of these three surahs today. But inshaAllah ta'ala, we'll be taking the first surah, which is Surah Al-Balad bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this surah with la uqsimu bihadha al-balad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by this particular sacred city, an amazing city, which is the city of Mecca. La uqsimu bihadha al-balad. I swear by this city, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And which one is this city? This city is the city of Mecca. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has said, wa walidin wa ma walad. And also a begetter, which means Prophet Adam alayhi salam, and that which he begot, his progeny, wa walidin wa ma walad. And in the middle of that, these two, mashallah, ayat, is another ayah, wa anta hillun bihadha al-balad. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has said to him, and you are free, you are free from sin, to punish the enemies of Islam on the day of the conquest in this city of Mecca. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the permission to fight in the city of Mecca at a particular time, for a certain period of time. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as you know, the city of Mecca is a sacred city. We're not allowed to kill anybody there. We're not even allowed to kill the birds and, and, and the animals of Mecca, the wildlife of Mecca, for example. And even we're not even allowed to cut the trees, subhanAllah, of, of, of Mecca, for example, and so forth. So it's a sacred city. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was given a period of, of the day to conquer the city of Mecca. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَنْ تَحِلُّمْ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Verily, we have created man in toil. Verily, we have created man in toil, in hardship. <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, there was a time when you were in the womb of your mother. It wasn't easy. Then there was a time when you came out of the womb of your mother. You were very young. And you were, subhanallah, very weak. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ ضَعْفٍ ثُمَّ جَعَلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ضَعْفٍ قُوَّةٍ ثُمَّ جَعَلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ ضَعْفًا وَشَيْبًا Subhanallah, as a human being, we are very weak. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا As a human being, we are very, very weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has allowed us to go through different stages in life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَ الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We have created man in toil. So every single time, as you, for example, leave from one difficulty, you enter into another difficulty. Subhanallah, sometimes you think you have just conquered something, okay, you were trying to do something and it was hard and then when you conquer that thing, then another challenge comes up. Life is always a challenge, subhanallah. Recently, someone was telling me, someone said, subhanallah, do you know, uh, my child as he grows older, things become more difficult as a parent. <laughs> it's true, subhanallah, because take, take life as an exam. Do you know an exam paper? The exam paper, when you open the exam paper, generally the easy questions will be at the, be at the beginning. Question one, question two, question three, question four. These questions will be easy questions. As you go through the paper, the harder questions, when do they come? At the beginning or the middle or at the end? The end, the questions that have the largest marks. 
they will come at the end. Life is just like that. Subhanallah. As you get older, the difficulties that, you, that you're going to go through and the, the things that you will experience in life will be more difficult. Subhanallah. Imagine if we lived so long that we have seen, we have, we have, a, we have seen our children, we have seen our grandchildren, we have seen our great grandchildren, we have seen great grand, and we have lived all that time. Imagine how much hardship would you have experienced? Because right now, when you have your own kids, you only have to worry about them. As they get older, they will get married. When they get married, are you going to stop worrying about them? Their problems continue. <laughs> so right now you have to deal with the issues. Your son is going to come to you or your daughter is going to come to you. Do you know I'm having a problem with my partner? You know, he's, he's not looking after me if, if she's the girl, okay? And if, if, you're, if, if she's your daughter. If you have a son, your son is going to come to you complain, Abo, daddy. Oh, subhanAllah. Do you know this girl that I got married to? Oh, if I knew Allah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got married to her. Why? <laughs> Calm down. What's the problem? Okay? What's the problem? Say, oh, she's giving me hard time. The sister is going to say the same to her father or to her mom. If I, so things will not be easy. As you get older, and then they will have kids. When they have their kids, now you're a grandfather. When you, have, when you, are, when you become a grandfather, what's going to happen? Your grandchildren will get into difficulties. And then... Their father will come to you. <laughs> My, your grandkids are having problems, giving me hard time. <laughs> okay, you deal with it. <laughs> They're giving you hard time. I, I helped you when you were young. <laughs> now you have to look after your kids. No, Allah, daddy, you have to help me. I, these are so, as you get older, things will not get easier. They will become more and more difficult. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ And as you get older, you become weaker. The problem is, when you were young, alhamdulillah, you were very strong. Mashallah, you had, mashallah, Alhamdulillah, when you were younger, you had energy, you, you, you were able to help a bit more. But now as you get older, you become weaker. Subhanallah. You're not able to help people as much as you were able to help them before. That's the reality. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Remember, as, as we go along life, subhanallah, as we subhanallah, travel through life, the journey of life, subhanallah, things, we will have hurdles that we have to go over that are kind of like harder and harder. And that's life. We have, to, we have to accept that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not hidden this from us. He said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, أَيَحْسَبُ أَلَّنْ يَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ أحد. The human being, he thinks that none can actually overcome him. Sometimes we are very arrogant people. Subhanallah. أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَلَّنْ يَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ أحد. Does he think that no one will have power over him? And then the human being is going to brag about the wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them and how they have spent that money. Look what he will say. يَقُولُ أَهْلَكْتُ مَالَ اللُّبَدَى He will say, he will say boastfully, I have wasted wealth in abundance. That's how, that's how he's going to talk. يَقُولُ أَهْلَكْتُ مَالَ اللُّبَدَى I have squandered great wealth, he will say. Okay, and who's the person who has squandered great wealth? Is the person who spends the wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to him to satisfy his whims. He will buy the latest private jets. He will be going to, uh, let's say, uh, to the casinos, and that's how he's going to spend his money. Or sometimes he will spend his money on women, for example, and, and, and commit zina and so forth. And he, that's what he will do. Or he will spend his money in good causes, but for what reason? To what end? For people to praise him. Yes. Sometimes someone might say, we see non-Muslims giving large amount of money to, for example, good causes. They give it to charities. Isn't that a good thing? Yes, it's a good thing. But is it going to benefit them? No. Why are they doing it? Are they doing it for the sake of Allah? They're not doing it for the sake of Allah. Why, why are they doing it? Just yeah, so for, 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 just for, for, for their name. So, just, so people say, wow, that person, look how generous he used to be. Look at the, how much money he donates. For example, Aisha radiallahu anha, she has asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was a man who was called Abdullah ibn Jud'an. Abdullah ibn Jud'an, he was very generous and he was very, very wealthy. And uh, she said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, and Abdullah ibn Jud'an was such a great man. Okay, and uh, he, was, he, was, he was very generous, he was very kind, he used to spend a lot of money in the poor. And will that, will that help him in the next life? And the Prophet ﷺ said to her, that will not help him in the next life. Because during his life, he said, he did it for what reason? He did it for people to say, mashallah, this guy is very generous. And not only that, the Prophet ﷺ also has said, this man, Abdullah ibn Jud'an, 
there was not a single day where he said, Ya Allah, forgive me. There was not a single day where he said to Allah, Ya Allah, forgive me. SubhanAllah. So what's, that, what's spending your wealth and giving it away, for example, either in good causes or bad causes, what is it going to benefit you if you're not doing it, doing it for the sake of Allah? He will say, يَقُولُ أَهْلَكْتُ مَا لَلُّبَدَى And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَيَحْسَبُ أَلَّمْ يَرَهُ أَحَدٌ Does he think no one observes him? Does he think like what he does, no one is aware of it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the person, I'm aware of it, my angels are writing down everything that you do. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the people the amazing, mashallah, blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with the people. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنِ وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجْدَيْنِ Amazing. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Have we not made for him a pair of eyes? Who gave you the eyes that you see with? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنِ And then, وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ have we not given him, subhanAllah, a tongue and a pair of lips? A pair of lips. Just imagine, imagine, if you, let's say, if you didn't have the ability to see, you would struggle. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you, subhanAllah, a tongue that allows you to express whatever feelings that you have inside your heart or in your mind. SubhanAllah. Also, a lisan is, is a tool that can help you conquer people. A lisan is a tool that can help you conquer other people. SubhanAllah, with your words. If you are very eloquent, you are able to talk so well, so much that you will be able to, SubhanAllah, brainwash the other people or to kind of like better them or to make them better people than they are right now. SubhanAllah. So, wa lisan and wa shafatin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's reminding the people of Quraysh, I have given you a tongue. Some of the ulama, they said, lisan, what it means is a language. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a language which was very eloquent language. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to them, you guys, ya Quraysh, instead of wanting to kill Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, instead of wanting, subhanAllah, and to violate, look at what the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding Quraysh. He's like saying, that, instead of wanting to violate the sacredness of Mecca, where you want to spill the blood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh, so instead of instead of what and and going against your constitution, what was the constitution of the Arabs? Never to hurt one of their own. So now you are willing to kill one of your own. Muhammad, who is he? He's from your people. He's from Quraysh. Not only from Quraysh. He's from Subhanallah, the best sub clan of Quraysh. He's from Banu Hashim. Subhanallah, who's Banu Abdul Muttalib? How on earth do you want to come and kill him? Why are you planning to expel him from the city? Why are you planning to kill him? I gave you a tongue, a, a language, an eloquence that, that if you are able to use it, come and try it. Try your tongue to, to overcome Muhammad. Okay, all he's doing, he's not fighting you, he's not killing you. He's only coming to you with words, which are the Quran. These words are the Quran. So if you are able, if you are proud of your language and eloquence, try and challenge him. But are they, were they able to do that? No. Like they're being reminded, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he's a single person. You guys, you are a lot in number, and you're very intelligent people. You're very eloquent people. Why don't you get together and try and see if you can challenge him with words? Can they do that? Were they able to do it? No. قُلْ فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِثْلِهِ Just come, come, come up with one surah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has said. Okay, that's similar to the Quran. They weren't able to do it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنِي وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ And imagine. Imagine someone without lips. Do you know the lips that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us? How many functions do they have? Three important functions. The th lips that we have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he gave us and blessed us with, they have three important functions. One function is that they help us, subhanAllah, you wouldn't be able to eat well if you didn't have lips. Just imagine eating food without lips. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to eat. Number two also, subhanAllah, Lips help you with speaking. Imagine if you didn't have your lips, would you be able to talk properly? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to talk properly. <laughs> Subhanallah. Another thing, another function of the lips is your beauty. Just imagine someone without lips and look at their face. 
<laughs> would anybody be able to look at your face? If I didn't have my lips this morning, you wouldn't be sitting in front of me. You say, we don't want to look at this ugly person, okay? Because you wouldn't want to sit in front of me without my lips, and all you can see is just my teeth. We have dentists among us. <laughs> Subhanallah, some of our brothers are doctors, dentists, and, and they, would, they, they cannot even imagine probably <laughs> someone without lips. Subhanallah. So, so the lips that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with, these are amazing. So Allah, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us. وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنَ The tongue on its own would not have been sufficient without the lips. You wouldn't be able to talk. Subhanallah, without your lips. وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجْدَيْنَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and shown him the two ways, the good and evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown the people, okay, this is the, the path of khair, this is the path of evil. It's up to you now, choose whichever one you want. وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجْدَيْنَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, فَلَقْتَحَمَ الْعَقَبَةِ But he made no effort to pass on the path that is steep. Al-Aqaba. Okay, this human being who doesn't want to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't want to make any effort. Okay, he doesn't want to make any effort to pass on the path that is steep. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْعَقَبَةِ And what will make you know the path that is steep? فَكُّ رَقَبَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it is freeing a neck. Meaning, freeing a slave. It is to free a slave. أَوْ إِطْعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ ذِي مَسْغَبَةِ Or giving food in a day of hunger. Giving food in a day of hunger. Ikhwani, my dear brothers and sisters, do you know the times that we are living right now? We have financial crisis. That's the reality right now. Things will become harder as we even go through the next few, maybe few months, next few days, I mean next few years, things might become really difficult, especially the economy. SubhanAllah, people are struggling. Some people are struggling to feed their own families. SubhanAllah, do you know uh, some of our Muslim community members, they go to food banks. They, they collect food from the food banks. We need to find, recently I was reading a statistics that was showing a good number of people go and actually get their food from the food banks. Muslims from our own community. SubhanAllah. What about the non-Muslims? They're also struggling the same. SubhanAllah. So as Muslims right now, we need to be helping one another. We need to be helping one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, أَوْ إِطْعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ ذِي this, this, is the, this, is the, this is the hard one. Okay? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَكُّ رَقَبَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, فَكُّ رَقَبَةً أَوْ إِطْعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ Or giving food in a day of hunger. A famine, when things are really becoming, when things are really hard, financially for the people. Okay, also, يَتِيمًا ذَا مَقْرَبَةً To an orphan near of kin. Okay, helping a poor, someone who's the yatim, an orphan, and also he's not far away from you in terms of lineage. Or to a miskin, poor, afflicted with misery, or a poor person in distress. So right now as Muslims, one of the things that we can do, especially those of us who live here in the UK or in the West generally, and where the majority of uh, members of our societies, they, they're not Muslims. As Muslims now, we can help the non-Muslim community. Okay, like the Prophet Sallallahu told us, someone is not a true believer if he goes to bed, okay, overfilled with food during the night, okay? <laughs> his tummy is full up and he has eaten a lot of food, but his next door neighbor goes to bed empty, for example, with no food during that night, empty belly, subhanAllah. He hasn't eaten anything. And maybe you have, not, you have never asked your next door neighbor or the people who are close to you, Okay, they're not far. You never ask them like, how are they feeling? How are they? How, uh, do they have food? Are they able to feed their family? Okay, so as Muslims, we should be going to our neighbors and actually finding out how they how they going, how how they doing generally. And 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 inshallah ta'ala, if we are able to support them, we should support them. So our miskina, this is a, a, a da'wah opportunity. This is a da'wah opportunity as well, mashallah. When the other non-Muslims, they see the Muslim community, for example, Muslim mem community members helping other people when they're in need and, and, and they're going through hardship, inshallah ta'ala, Allah will soften their hearts and they will look into our religion. And inshallah ta'ala, they will accept the religion of Islam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ كَانَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And to be one of those who believe and urge one another to steadfastness and compassion. ثُمَّ كَانَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَوَاصُوا Then he became one of those who believed and recommended one another to perseverance and patience and also recommended one another to pity and to piety and also <coughs> compassion. أُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they are those on the right, those people who have got the characteristics that we mentioned right now, what will happen to them? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ulaika ashabul maiman. They are those on the right hand, the dwellers of paradise. Walladhina kafaru bi ayatina hum ashabul mash'ama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Walladhina kafaru bi ayatina hum ashabul mash'ama. But those who disbelieve in our revelations will be on the left hand side. Alayhim narun mu'sada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Alayhim narun mu'sada. The fire will be shut over them. Okay, the, eye, the fire will be shut over them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, oh, and the fire will close on them. So inshallah ta'ala, right now we're going to look at what are the practical, inshallah ta'ala, uh, lessons that we can take from today's, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, Fajr reflection. And we will look at, for example, <coughs> some of the lessons that we can take from this, inshallah ta'ala, reminder today is, aw si ba'd, من تعرف بالصبر على طاعة الله أو الصبر عن معصية الله أو الصبر على أقدار الله okay? Advise some of the people that you know that they need to be patient when it comes to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Tell them, okay, yes, I know sometimes it's difficult to perform ibadah, okay, but you have to be patient. You have to be patient on it. Also, our sabr and ma'asiyatillah. Yes, sometimes it's difficult to abstain from the ma'asi or, for example, the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or committing sins. Also to have sabr ala aqdarillah. Yes, to have sabr when it comes to what? The, 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 destin, the, the, the destiny or what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined for you and preordained for you. You have to be patient with that. Also, وَأَوْصِهِمْ بِرَحْمَةِ الْخَلْقِ Also, advise the people to be kind to other people. SubhanAllah, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a believer right now, like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Imam al-Sa'd rahimahullah ta'ala, when he was explaining this ayah, some of the things he said is, the, a true believer is someone who loves for other Muslims what he loves for himself. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَا يُؤْمِنُ أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى يُحِبَّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ لِأَخِيهِ Ask yourself right now, the brother who's sitting next to you, this brother, do you love for him what you love for yourself? Just ask yourself that. Hajj <laughs> Umar, now who's sitting towards your left? <laughs> do you love for him what you love for yourself? <laughs> this, this, yeah, this, yeah, 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 you, have to, you have to think like that and say, Brother Ibrahim, Mashallah, who's sitting towards your right? Who's sitting towards your left? Mashallah. <laughs> you need to ask yourself, do I love for my brother what I love for myself? Yeah. Subhanallah. And so forth. Okay, you need to ask, Umar at the back. Mashallah, Abu Ali is sitting next to you. Yeah. Brother Ibrahim, do you love for him what, what you love for yourself? Do you love for him what you love for yourself? <laughs> this is like, وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْسَبْرِ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْمَرْحَمَةِ Okay, this is the marhama. Imam, Imam Sa'id one of the things he said, you love for your brother, mashallah, what you love for yourself. This is the practical Islam. Okay, the akhlaq, the Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? What will cause the people to enter paradise is husnul khuluq. So, taqwa Allah wa husnul khuluq. What will help people enter paradise the most? The Prophet ﷺ, taqwa Allah wa husnul khuluq. Okay, being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having good character. Having good akhlaq. The Prophet, what did he say? Innama bu'ithu li utammima makarim al akhlaq. Our religion is about akhlaq. Okay? Our religion is not about just seeking knowledge for the sake of seeking knowledge. So, whatever you learn, you put it into action. Love for your brother what you love for yourself. I love for you what I love for myself. MashaAllah. <laughs> I'll tell you, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with Jannah for those al-A'la. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you in this life and the next life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this exam that you're going through, inshaAllah ta'ala, an exam that you're going to excel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Some of our brothers have recently gone and traveled, like Abu Yasir is not here this morning. How many of you are missing Abu Yasir? I'm sure, yes, sir. some of you already have taken note. Abu Yasir, I can't see him. You know Abu Yasir, he's always here every morning. He's not here this morning. Yeah. MashaAllah. A new brother who recently joined the masjid. MashaAllah, Abu Muhammad. And yes, yes. Brother Uthman has been away for three weeks. Yes. And we have mentioned that he's going to be away for almost a month. And inshallah ta'ala, he sent his salam to us as well. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, we're missing those brothers. So inshallah ta'ala, we need to take care of one another. We need to think about, inshallah, if we are missing one of, one of us, mashallah, we have to ask and say, where is that person, subhanallah? Yes. Has anyone, no one came to me and said to me, Brother Uthman, there's someone called Brother Uthman. Yes. Brother Uthman, is, okay. Sheikh Saeed is missing. Who's, who can remember Sheikh Saeed? Ma'ali Saeed. Who's Ma'ali Saeed? No one came to me and said to me, where's Ma'ali Saeed? 
<laughs> He's going back home. Okay, so inshallah, we, we need to think like the people who come to our jama'ah, people, the congregation that comes to our masjid. Yes, alhamdulillah. So, wa tawasaw bil marham. Always keep your eyes open and see who's here, who's not here. Yes, brother, brother Ali, yes, well done. <laughs> brother Ali is missing these days. Yeah. Okay, well, brother Ali, where's brother Ali? <laughs> yeah, you are his neighbor, mashallah. You know him, mashallah. You need to find out, inshallah ta'ala, how he's doing. Ta'ala. So, just like, and also our brother Muhammad, we haven't, we don't see him as much. Our brother Muhammad, Muhammad Ali, Samiyi, ah, from Saudi. Ah, we don't see him as much as we used to. Yeah, we need to find out what's going on. Okay, exactly. Yes, Alhamdulillah, that's what we need to see, mashallah. That brotherhood and love for one another, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan to all of you, barakallah fiqh. May Allah bless you. Wa tawasun bil haq, wa tawasun bil marhamah. Hayyakumullah.